everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so grab a brush, grab some paints, grab some models, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models. Yes. Adam, you missed a spot. And uh, today I'm going to work on some Tyranids, some Termagons, which I know is a very big change from last week's Space Marine painting extravaganza that I've been working on the last few weeks. But um, I'll talk about it today. I'm painting some Termagons today. Uh, 35 of them to be specifically. I'm going to work on the blues today and then go from there. And we'll see how long we paint for. So, let's get started. Yes. So everyone, today I'm going to be working on a bunch of Termagons. 35. I'm working on at the moment. Uh, approximately 35, maybe 36. We'll find out together. So, let me just make sure that's in focus, because I don't think that is. There we go. So yeah, today I'm going to be working on the blue areas. As you can see, they kind of look, because uh, I've already done the whites, but the way I paint my, my Tyranids, I uh, base coat them in Cantor Blue, and then um, hit them with a water down non-oil so it produces that really dark tone so right now they kind of look like they've been gray washed or white well, you know so and i'll be putting back in the blues today with some thin down um calador sky which is cool yeah and so that will produce the nice blues and yeah, as you can see on the background, I've painted a few of these guys so far. Um, I basically, I knew that the Tyranny Codex was coming out and I've been having fun painting Space Marines, you know, the last few weeks. And the new Tyranny Codex came out and I thought, you know what? I wonder how many Tyranids I have that are unpainted, you know? As I say, jokingly, no, not jokingly, but I do say at the beginning of every video, let's rid our world of unpainted models. And I thought, well, I wonder how many models have I assembled for Tyranids and not painted? And now some of them aren't mine, um, aren't, they are mine, but I, I'm buying them, I bought them off, off my friend Andy. So... He had a bunch of uh, Tyranid bits as well. Um, so I, I found my Tyranid, I have all my, my models separated, my unpainted models separated by army. And so I went and grabbed my Tyranid um, box and went through it. And I found way too many models. So then I decided, I'm like, you know what? New Tyranid Codex is coming out. This is the perfect time to paint up the rest of my Tyranid army, or at least until I get really bored. Now, the only thing is about painting Tyranids is there's not a lot of, of variation, right? Because if you paint, like, one color scheme, you'll be painting the same color scheme because they all look the same. That's okay. You can always mix up the color scheme, but I like my Tyranids to look the same. So, that's okay. I'll be doing that. So, I started on... This was on Monday, and since then, I've... Well, I made sure that I assembled a bunch of models as well. Um, but I'm, I've now, when I started painting these guys, they, they were in like four different stages of being painted. So they're all now in the same stage. I've caught them all up to each other. That's what I like to do whenever I'm batch painting a large group is I like to start from the very beginning and make sure that everyone is caught up on. So I just start on the first step and then work my way towards you know the, the next step and then slowly but surely they all get caught up. There we go, that's painted in number 27. And grab the next one. Um, and go from there. So it's nice. It really is. It's been a good week so far painting. Um, I'm working later this week. It's a little too much paint. I'm gonna draw that back. Um, I'm painting. I'm doing a few late shifts this week. That's why I'm painting, and it's it's only in the morning. Um, that's okay. So what I've been doing is I've been painting in the morning, and then going to work, and then uh, coming home and just chilling with my girlfriend, and watching TV and relaxing. Yeah. But uh, so I found 
as I said, way, way too many assembled Tyranids that were in, like, broken condition or um, just needed some TLC. A uh, bunch of them were my friend's gene stealers. So I found just over at least 35. Um, I, I didn't actually count them yet. Let's, let's stop and count them for a second. So 28, 30, 32, 35, 38 horm uh, Termagons. So I'm painting just under 40 Termagons right now. And that's awesome. So after this, I'll have a bunch more Termagons for battle reports. Um, yeah. So a... Bunch more Termagons. So 38 Termagons. That's a good amount of Termagons. Seems I already have about, I don't know, at least 40, 50 painted up. So I'll have a good amount of ho for a horde army soon. Um, I've also found about a dozen Hormagons. So 38 Termagons, a dozen Hormagons. Uh, at least 20 Gene Stealers. I'm guessing closer to 30 Gene Stealers. So I can do Stealer Spam. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, maybe like, I don't know. I could run, how many Gene Stars do I have painted right now? 32. So I'll probably have about 60 total. I can run three squads of, three squads of 20 Gene Stealers, each with a Broodlord. Um, and then figure it out from there. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe with a fly rent or some deck effects. So, I also found uh, three biovores, some rippers, of course, but I don't really like rippers. Um, let's see, what else did I find? Uh, a Carnifex that I will be using as Old One Eye, because he was really nicely put together. Um, he has a, he's eating a Space Marine. And I'm like, oh wow, I just have so many Tyranids. I really should stop what I'm doing right now with the. I, all I'm painting right now is left. The only thing I have left is that ancient. And I, I tried Primaris Marines out the other day, and I'll gladly keep using them, but I don't think I'll be using the ancient much. So and I can really take my time on him. So why don't we just take our time? Uh, not take our time. So why don't we just um, start some Tyranids? All right? Get these guys all done. Get them, you know, on the tabletop in battle reports. That's really good because that, you know, what it's a fun way to motivate myself. I will have an entire like if I can paint it up my entire army and remove all the tyranny boxes from my my pre-painted like all my stuff that is not painted yet. That would be really cool. I have a lot of painting to do though. Uh, I found another hive tyrant. <laughs> um, and then I went to the local gaming store, um, just once again, to see if there were any, because uh, Carnifex is, uh, GW is unfortunately really hard to keep track of stocks right now. It seems like every time they do a new codex or anything new, everything good instantly disappears from their web store. Like, an orc knob with wall banner hasn't been available pretty much since launch of 7th edition, or 8th edition, sorry. Um, and right now, almost all the orc stuff, I gotta sneeze. So, um, all the good work stuff, and even right now, all the Tyranid stuff, most of the Tyranid stuff is also unavailable in Canada. So I'm like, oh, well, I really like another Carnifex. Um, I know I just said I have tons of models to paint, but the DAC effects are actually good now, apparently. I've been watching a few reviews, of course, since reviews now come out well before Codices. Um, I'll do my own review, probably, of the, uh, the Tyranid Codex on the weekend. And I'll just bring my opinion to it. Um, it'd be hard to bring any new information, but at least I can bring my opinion and think of some cool combinations and stuff. Um, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I found, uh, so well at the game store, of course they were sold out of Carnifexes, and they're on back order. Um, but I was looking at the, the local store called um, Dueling Grounds has a, like a bit section where you can just buy, you know, you can buy and trade pre-painted miniatures and they're usually in terrible condition, but to someone like me, well, like to, you know, I can quickly, uh, I have tons of bits and I, I can reassemble them and I'm just going to quickly reload my wet palette. I've used all of my camp, my Caldor Sky. Um, I have tons of bits. I can reassemble. I can make them bigger and better and faster. And so I was just looking around and I remembered thinking that there was a Karn effects there. I thought there was, and I found one. Yeah, and it was, it was unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't built the nicest. It was by a new builder, apparently. And he built it, trying to make it look like a high tyrant, essentially. So he made it, he made the, like, the torso was reversed so that he was arched upward, standing there with two guns. And it was really, it was heavily, heavily primed, and it still is. But um, it needed some love. And I took it home. I, like, broke half the things up right off it and just had to, like, remove the bit, the areas that it was glued together for the head, for the arms. And but I had tons of bits for my Carnifex stuff. And, and I also had the Twin Link Devourers kit from Forge World that I was going to put on another Flyrant, but then I thought, you know what, I already have another Flyrant. I don't need another, you know, I already have several... So, I put them back together, and here's what it looks like. I still have to prime them. It's really focused in. Here we go. He looks good. I know he's kind of legally built because he has two twin-linked devourers and sighting talents, but it's okay. I'll just count them as this for games because I need to build it. So he looks pretty awesome. He's still pretty heavily primed, but that's okay. I'll I'll paint him up. He'll look good. So, and he only cost. He was in such bad condition. I only spent twenty bucks. It was 1995, and so for 20 bucks, I have now a DAC effects. And apparently, DAC effects is now are dirt cheap, They're like 100 points, and you get a DAC effects with 24 strength, six shots. Now I think they only hit on fours, but there might be some buffers like um, enhanced senses or something that will. Um, Maybe make it better. That's cool. So now I can do like a DACA list where I um, could, yeah, I could do tons of gaunts and flyrants and carnifexes. You know, squad of thirty hormi uh, termag squad of thirty termagons is only it's only like 150 points I'm pretty sure I think they're five points a model so build a list of them now I have at least I do have a, I guarantee I have at least 80 and uh, that'd be kind of fun again if my opponent brings armor that's going to be still the bane of Tyrion's existence is armor I filmed a battle report with the old Tyranid rules, of course, the current ones, um, a couple weeks ago with Stu, and I'm not going to ruin it or anything, but you'll see. It was it was hard. Uh, it was a hard game for Tyranids because of armor. Tyranids aren't really good at cracking armor since Tyranids don't have a lot of, of D and AP. You know, the Swarm Lord was really just nuts in close combat, so if you a Swarm Lord ran up, he could do, you know, D6 damage on each one. But in the new codex, apparently, it has been nerfed to 3. And I'm actually a bigger fan of D6. I know there's the random aspect to it. But um, if you look at 3, right, statistically, two-thirds of the time, you'd roll a better result than a 3. No, sorry, half the time, you'd roll a better result than a 3, sorry. And then one-sixth one of the time, it'd be equal to a 3. And then one-third of the time, less than a 3. Right. So, a three is a nerf. I, I see it as a nerf. 
And I don't know why, because the bru the Swarm Lord was the only, one of the only things that tyrants have, other than, you know, like, monstrous sighting talons, which you run at your opponent with. And uh, that's, that's an option, too. And that is definitely an option. And crushing claws and in close combat and stuff. But from a distance, like, Space Marines have LAS cannons. Right? Space Marines have LAS cannons. Uh, Tau have some good guns. Eldar have some good guns. Tyranids, and even Orcs. Well, Orcs don't really have any high, you know. Uh, Ludas, for example, are still minus one, I'm pretty sure. D2. You know, that's not too bad. But Tyranids don't really have a lot of that shooting capability. So... I really do hope they kept that that um, Swarm Lord rule that he allows one unit to advance. In the movement phase. I'm sorry, in the shooting phase. I don't know. So guys, we're 15 minutes in and they're just coming along. So yeah, I've decided that I'm gonna take a break from my other armies for painting and just paint Tyranids. Why not? If if it's if it's motivating me to paint, that's what matters, right? I'm gonna be painting Tyranids and getting rid of you know if I Plus, turns are a little easier, of course. So these termagons, I should have done in the next, you know, by next painting with Jay, I'm hoping to be on the next thing, whether it be Gene Stealers or my Carnifexes. That, those are the next two, I think. Maybe the Hormagons. There's only 12 Hormagons, and I already have tons of Hormagons. So I don't think they would bring that much new to the table. But, um... So, we'll see. But, um, Tyranids, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. And so, yeah, sorry, I can get 30 Gaunts. And yeah, so I'm going to do probably, I don't know, as I haven't decided between Gene Stealers or Carnifexes. Um, I heard some more Battle Foam to put all these guys in um, from the local shop that sells Battle Foam, which is in Toronto, called Meeple Mart. And unfortunately, two-thirds of what I ordered, they didn't actually have. So I'm like, oh, that's okay. So maybe next time. Battle Foam's just hard to get as well in this area. So I didn't just go to whatever Meeple Mart has. But I have to store these guys. Or maybe I'll just take like the matte approach from Mini Wargaming. Obviously, if they're painted, if they're assembled with plastic glue, right? Like Matt has boxes. These just those tiny boxes that are just filled to the brim with um, gaunts and hormagons and stuff, gene stealers. Maybe I'll take that approach. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, can't wait. So half of these guys have flesh borers, half of them have devourers. I was thinking of breaking them and putting all devourers on them, but that would just take a lot of time. So. Um. Yeah. I can always count as devourers. That would be kind of fun. All the deco. All the deco.
I'm here, cool. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm happy. These were a bunch of guys that were on, that were already assembled. And there we go. Another one done. So Christmas is of course coming up. Halloween's done, and the next day everything gets converted to Christmas. Now in Canada, we typically wait till November twelfth for like full Christmas craziness. A lot of stores are asked not to play Christmas music until after November 11th, which is 11-11 uh, Remembrance Day in Canada. I think there's like Veterans Day in the United States, an equivalent, where we honor those who fought and died and, and fought and or died in our country. And uh, so that'll be on Saturday. And so, um, starting Sunday, it's going to be full Christmas craziness. Yeah. It's going to be nuts. That's okay. Um... But uh, yeah, Christmas is upon us. I've already figured out what I'm getting my girlfriend. I just have to order it. But um, I don't know how I'm going to sneak it by her. Hmm. She's home all the time. So if I get it delivered, well, she's home a lot during the week, sorry. So if I have it delivered. These guts are coming along well. It's awesome. Um, yeah. What else? I'm happy that I'm finally getting all these, as I said, these guns done. So yeah, Christmas time. I'm gonna start organizing. Uh, my hours, I think, have been just my schedule's finally been released for Christmas. It's gonna be my first Christmas with my girlfriend in my new house. That'll be really cool. Um, I'm excited about that. And uh, yeah. It's getting cool. Um, I'm going to keep putting out tons of content. So the warp is officially dying um, in less than a month, right? A few weeks. So I've decided officially that I'm going to take all the painting tutorials and the Airbrush 101 series and I'm going to move it to the free content uh, eventually. You know, one video at a time because might as well, right? Release them steadily. And then all the videos that I worked really hard on for the warp, I'm not saying I didn't work hard on the battle reports or anything, but I, come on, I know that the, the old battle reports won't get any views, right? Neither will the old Q and J warp editions. But what it will do is it will allow me to just focus on one channel as I've been doing for the last, you know, month or so. And I hope you guys have noticed that there have been a pretty good increase in content. And I changed my Patreon. Um, I don't mean to bring it up every time, but now it's per video, but it's only per battle report and um, codex review. Because I do a lot of videos that won't be charging for that. That'd be mean otherwise. So that will allow me to at least free up some time that I can film and edit and, and, you know, put up some good content. So there'll be painting tutorials, there'll be battle reports, uh, there's going to be, you know, Airbrush 101 and Miniature Painting 101, which Miniature Painting 101 has about 10 more episodes and then I'm going to ask for more ideas, or I might start asking for more ideas soon. 
and then just you know keep going with that series. So there's going to be a lot of content coming back. And I'm hoping that with this regularity of content, the views will come back, and the subscribers will come back, and the channel will be brought back to where it once was. I do feel sometimes that it's almost the shell of what it once was, but I want to keep going. I want to keep fighting hard for what I know, all the content I worked hard for to make. But I think regularity is one of the keys and it will hopefully happen soon. I put out two battle reports in the last three weeks. One came up yesterday. Uh, Painting with Jays aren't going to stop anytime soon, you guys know that. Because this is my hour of talking and painting and it's very cathartic to me. It's very... Uh, you know, rather than going to a psychiatrist, I should just come and paint and talk to you all you guys. Um, Life's been good. I'm just really tired, to be honest. I'm tired, just physically tired. I'm uh, trying to eat slightly healthier than I was. Um, I definitely don't drink anywhere near as much pop as I used to. I don't. I stopped buying it in my, from my house, and I do occasionally have it, like when I'm at a restaurant or something. I have a water and maybe a pop. We'll see. Many on the the time, but uh, I stopped buying soft drinks, which makes me really crave freaking soft drinks. Like, oh my goodness! But uh, it's okay, you know. I'm also going to start next as of next week. I started filming this. I'm going to do slight tweaks in my battle reports, even again. Uh, it was an idea that Stu and I discussed, and I think I think Matt, uh, sorry, Dave was also a part of the conversation. My friend Dave from Bridge North, Northridge. I think he might have been a part of one of the conversations as well. So I'm going to I'm going to credit him as well. But um, I'm going to start doing a bit of tactica in my battle reports, and I think people are going to like it. so at least <laughs> yeah what else oh I really love um, I my last two battle reports are going to be um, Open War. Uh, not Open War, the type of game, but Open War uh, for the cards. I really like them. I think I actually might solely start using Open War cards. Um, the games are nowhere near as balanced, but they're so much more fun. So much more fun. Um, interesting deployment types, interesting scenarios. Uh, I do love the twists, though the last one... Um, I filmed with Dave, we completely forgot about one of the two twists. We remembered one of the twists, but not the second twist. It was kind of funny. The second twist would have been a game changer if I remembered, because it allowed me to heal my characters, basically. Uh, one character, D3, per turn. That's okay. And I'm, again, we're learning the rules still for armies, right? It was my first time using Primaris Marines. It was his first time using... Um, Blood Angels, and then like my game with Stu, it was his first time using Astro Militarum, it was my first time using Tyranids. So, both times, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm playing. And now, of course, the Tyranid Codex is changing again. That's okay. Can't wait to have that Carnifex made up, too. He's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I think next I'm going to do Old One-Eye 
who's this guy? I'll, I'll show you old one eye. He's a little zoomed out right now, but look at that. He's old one eye because he has the, the one eye, and he's eating the arm off a space marine who's holding onto his tusk. Like, I love it. It was well made, great miniature, has magnetic arms, so I can swap it out for maybe guns or I don't know. I'll keep it like this. But um, he's such a cool miniature, and I'm like, I'm making this my old one eye for sure. Remembrance Day, though, um, when I used to live in Guelph, Remembrance Day was a big thing. Here it's a pretty big thing, too. But uh, Guelph was a really big war memorial city. We actually had a, a hall called War Memorial Hall that my grandmother, like, she used to tell me about how, when, cause she grew up in Guelph. Um, when she was, you know, a teenager, she'd go to dances there and stuff during the war. And, um, there's actually a street named after my last name. In, in Guelph. Um, now it's not a very important street anymore. I think in fact the road's closed now because uh, they kept moving around the name to different streets and then now it's just on a closed corridor that transfer trucks used to park at. But um, yeah, because years ago my, um, the, the city of, of Guelph ran out of city uh, like street names, so they did a little thing where they said if you, because we're big on, you know, we're really, also, um, if you've ever heard the poem In Flanders Fields, it was written by a guy from Guelph, John McRae. Um, so if you, if you have, you know, relatives who were part of Guelph and also are war veterinarians, veterinarians, war veterans, uh, throw the name forth and they will accept some for street names. And my, my grandfather, uh, Edward, and his brother, Jack, both fought in World War II. So they, and they lived almost their entire lives in Guelph um, when they, until they passed. My grandfather uh, passed away years ago, um, 20 years ago, uh, no, 1998. But um, yeah, he passed away a long time ago. He was, he was an older gentleman. He was, um, when he passed away, he was in his eight, he was almost 90, I think, when he passed away. And, uh, so, but, yeah, we named his street after him. It was really cool. And I thought to myself, I really wanted to steal that street sign, which sounded rude. I know, like, it sounds like I wanted, I wanted to face, um, it was actually an inter interesting internal struggle I thought of because I wanted to steal it so that I could put it in my house and, and remember my grandfather by because it's on a useless street. Like the street doesn't, it, it's a tra it's a street where they, they park transport trucks half, like every spring. It's not a, a way of really remembering him. But then I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want to face property. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that, so I didn't, and I didn't. So now I'm heavily watering down the um, Lothurn Blue. And I'm going to start doing my stripe, my feathering pattern, not feathering pattern, ticking pattern, whatever they call it. on um, the gods. So, just gonna put that in my lap. I'm 
So what I do is I separate the bristles out. Like that. And then I just hold them. And drag it back a little bit. That's what I do. And I'm going to do this with white. It completes it. Maybe I should do both whites and, and yeah, maybe we'll do that. I'll put them both on, on at the same time. Um, so I'll do, I'll add the white to my palette right now and do the same thing. But it looks like I'll be taking the next, you know, couple hours of my time just painting the ticking patterns. And that's okay. Then I'll do the guns and life will be good. Where are we at now? We're at 36 minutes. So I'll paint for another about 20. What time it is? <laughs> Let me see what time it is. <laughs> okay. So yeah, about an hour before my shift. That's okay. Yeah, I said I'm gonna. I'm happy that I'm going to keep uh, painting. Let's thin this down. It's white. So I can paint white and blues at the same time. They'll be done. And I'll just do the like. Obviously, I have to write eyes and tongues. And so there's gonna be some details on these guys. They're not gonna be three color minimum by any means. Well, they're already more than three color minimum after this. But, um, so now I take the white, watch this, so I take the whites and do the same thing. I intentionally try to like mix up the crossings. And they're gone. So you know what? They'll be part of a horde army. And look at that. So one, the carapid, the I have a carapid done on one. One for 38. I think I'm going to name this title of this video um, Tidal Wave of Termagons or Tidal Wave of Tyranids. Next one. See, this is gonna be—it's gonna be a good time to just paint all these guys, get them all done before the codex drops. So that way, I can actually use them as soon as possible. Um, I'm gonna to try to film at least a battle report. I'm gonna see if I can do a battle report a week, and starting in the near future, once I get my schedule figured out. Um, a battle report a week would be nice. I can usually, you know, 
I know Dave and Stu and sometimes Trevor or wanting to. So, seems to fix the brush. Um, so, I'll see if I can. This is my, my friend Stu is currently working on um, Mortarian. I really do want to film a battle report where it's just a group of Imperial Fists versus Mortarian and see who wins. Funniest thing is, Mortarian could win or he could die. Maybe I'm giving him too much credit, but uh, there we go. Terrific. Mortarian would be cool face. Uh, he might eat. Turn is for breakfast. That'd be kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, could you just try tar pitting him? Tar, tar pit him. I guess he could just back out of combat anyway, right? Because he has fly. Attack him with hordes of termagants. Kind of the Zap, the Zap Renigan, you know, method. When they were facing the killer robots, you sent waves of waves of human soldiers. Until the robots essentially malfunctioned out of overuse. <laughs> send waves and waves of gaunts. Depending on the twist, like we're playing with the, the cards, one of the twists is that everyone gets an extra attack, which is really fun for horde armies, because then everybody, you know, everyone gets an attack. So that means Termagants would get two attacks each. Of course, hitting on like fours and moving on sixes is Mortarian, but still, I want to, you know, with that volume, you could actually maybe do a wound or two. Maybe more. And then you have a Turvagon behind them. Um, Turvagon behind them. Fixing 10 a turn. Bringing back 10. I don't really like the Turvagon's um, new Brood Progenitor rule because of the now they're good for healing the 10. I like that. The 10 healing ones, that one works. But for me, the bringing 10 into the game one rule is not so good. Because then you have to pay for the Termagons. And they're just a device of letting them enter the game. So, and if your opponent kills the Termagon, which is what I would do if you were worried about the, ter the Termagons, you just kill the Termagon. And then the, ter the Termagons have to come in from reserve, right? It's, um, I don't know, the fact you have to prepay. They're turbo guns, they're turbo guns, right? Like I'm obviously painting these guys right now and I like them, but still, they're only, they're little bantha fodder models, right? They're not meant to, they're meant to jump on objectives and, and um, Kind of do those things. Not, they're not the, the. The reason why they were so good in the previous editions was you could spawn them and bring them into the game, and that way they were actually, you know, they weren't amazing models, but they were free, and for a free model, that they're awesome. My brush is not working with me today. Keeps branching out too much. But, um, yeah, that's what the kind of fun was, so.
now that, like, again, it's like, uh, if you were a demon player, you're not a spawning demon player anymore. It's a little more wild of a pattern than I like. I might try to open brush. See the feather? I'm getting the brush. Oh, I want it. Yeah. I'm gonna try a different brush. Or else I'd have to do my ticking individually. Huh. Which I can do. Why not? In the meantime, individual ticking. That brush isn't getting along with me. Keep going. You can just do like this. Two. Yeah, that'll work. I just mix, thin down some more white. And we'll call it soon. Not another 10 minutes of painting. And, uh, yeah, these guys are really coming along. As I said, if I put in my hour a day, every day, I should have them done probably by next painting with Jay. And then I'll have 30 gaunts, ready, or 38 gaunts now on the, ready to go on the table. And then start working on my old one eye and DACA effects. is new and exciting. Yeah, not too much. In a, in a world of 40k tunes, that's going to be good. Um, yeah, I want to read the codex through a few times, figure it out. And I don't want to go solely based on the reviews so far. What I think, why did they nerf certain things? I don't know. And I'm going to take the next little while and just, um, you know, my, my Tyranids in gear. And go from there. But I have, I'm really enjoying this, um, my hour a day that I've been putting through because it's led to some results as I knew it would right and right now I'm figuring out Christmas plans which now you know I wasn't part of a relationship last year or I was sorry um, but um, you know that when you're not when you're just you know new into a relationship really because it's our first Christmas really together and we're gonna have to figure out, you know, between the families, what we want to do Christmas Day and all that stuff. Which we will. We'll make some compromises and and figure it out from there. That's always fun. It's a bit of driving. Either way, it'll involve a bit of driving because um, 
her family lives about three hours away from my, the, the closest relative of mine. From her parents, my girlfriend's parents' house to my mother's house, it's like five hours. You know? That's, that's pretty long. But uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And if these this what, five guys will have the curvers done. Hmm. Not too bad. And then guns. Teeth, those are guns, eyes. Um and the little you know, their feet. And then uh done. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know how long it'll take me to paint all these guys, but as long as I'm working hard on them. Well, this World Series is over. Of course, congrats to the, uh, to the Houston Astros. And it's crazy, though, unfortunately, what happened with, um, Roy Halladay. Are you, one of the, like, Arguably one of the two best pitchers to ever pitch for the Blue Jays. He, uh, he died in a plane crash, uh, I believe, on the weekend. Yeah. He's only 40 years old. It's crazy. He recently got, in, well, his, his passion was planes, and he recently bought a plane. It's just nuts. I can't believe that. Done that. After this guy, I'm probably gonna call it because we're painting uh, for about an hour. And I gotta go get ready for work now. Soon. This is producing at least a good ticking pattern. This I'm doing individually. It'll take a little longer, but it'll be nice. And then, 33 left to go. <laughs> Another thing about paint as a Tyranids is that I'll be using the same, because uh, I want one high fleet of looking all the same color, right? I have to, it's going to be a little bit repetitive since I'm just going to be repeating the same steps other than my, my uh, Gene Sears, which I do paint to a slightly different color scheme. Uh, there we go. Everyone else will most likely have... same uh, color scheme and it's going to be a bit of repetitive next few weeks.
Mighty Zizzle go be their Bantha fodder selves in the game. At least they tend to be, you know, so low on the priority scale of my opponent that they rarely get dealt with early on because if you have a high tyrant coming at you and some gaunts, you're not going to really focus on the gaunts. But they, and they used to be a good tar pit unit because then uh, if they were in um, Synapse, they were fearless, right? So you couldn't get rid of them. But now, of course, with 40k... There's no more tar pitting. Done. All right, so I'm gonna finish up. That was good. We got all the blues, care paces, and now I've done the ticking pattern on five of them. So I'm gonna call it here. So. That concludes another painting with Jay. Hope you got some stuff done. And uh, yeah, you got in your reading of a world of unpainted models. Maybe you found a giant horde of Tyranids too and you're trying to get rid of them by painting them and getting them on your tabletop too. Hope so. So stay tuned for more videos as always. I really appreciate you painting along with me and listening to my ramblings. And stay tuned for more content. As always, this is a free, free content video. So I'm gonna have to stop saying the free content because it's gonna be in a month, there'll be no more work. That's okay. So it's, of course, sponsored by my Patreon subscribers. As you can see, their names go by my head. Huge thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. Uh, and uh, if you want to help support my videos, please check out my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below. Stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying, have a pain. With me?